Welcome now to Cheese Aquarium, everybody. Today I'm going to give an update on the build, starting with the 400 gallon tank. Now, it has taken a long time to get here, but I'm happy to say that the 400 is in its build test now. It's been running for a few days, had water in it a little over a week, but I wasn't able to actually get the tank fully plumbed in until late last week. Just an enormous amount of work went into getting the plumbing job done for this aquarium. As a matter of fact, I'll say this was by far the most labor intensive plumbing that I've ever had to do for an aquarium system before. But now that it's done, the 400 is in line, it's in test. Probably gonna be testing it for at least a couple more weeks. And I really wanna share what went into getting the plumbing system on this tank going. And then talk about some of the other things that are going on in the fish room. Now the plumbing for the 400 started off pretty complicated because I wasn't able to just put in a straight return and drain line for this tank. There was a lot of extra complexity added to the plumbing on this tank because I needed to fill some redundancy gaps and give myself some options for later on down the road in case things come up or just nice to have that are always the thing to do when you're plumbing in initially as going back around when it's all in operation. You tend to never want to do them because it becomes too big of a job. Therefore, I wanted to get a few things accomplished with this plumbing. To start off, I had to put in my whole plumbing trestle in order to accommodate the inch and a half return for the 400. And a little bit about this plumbing trestle. The bottom is two two inch lines, which are actually the drains for the 400. The next one up here is a four inch line that'll be the drain for the main display system. And then the next four inch above that is a ventilation intake line for the dehumidifier. So the canopy from the display in the 400 will come through this line and go to the dehumidifier eventually. Finally on top, I have the return line here. Right now there's an inch and a half line for the 400. Eventually, there'll be a couple of two inch lines for the display return pumps. Now coming over from the 265 gallon the pump that's in there now is not going to stay there. It's going to move into the secondary sump, which is going to be starting around here where these 2x4s are on the floor. Therefore, I wanted to be able to get the 400 running now with the sump I have, and then move it over to the new sump once it's built. The first valve isolates this line towards the 265. The second valve here is for the return pump once it gets plumbed in. This vertical line here was an optional thing I did where it's a, a pump out of, for wastewater to pump it out of the waistline of the house. Originally I wasn't going to do this, but I thought this would be a good thing to have in place just in case I need it. And finally, an isolate valve towards the 400 in case I have to do the pump out or reverse the flow back to the other sump. This gave me some options and was the first big step I had to get completed in the return line plumbing for the 400. Once I get past all the valves on the 400's return line, it just simply comes up and over and down into the 400 gallon tank. I do have an anti-siphon hole drilled just at the water line on this. And so far it's worked out perfectly for holding the water right where it should be. It's a JVO DCP 15,000 is the return pump and I have it wide open at 100 watts. Where things started to get more complicated though was the drain line system for this tank. Let's go behind the tank and see what's going on there. Now, the drain line system for the 400 is where a lot of the labor intensive plumbing came in. It might look pretty complex here, but there's actually not a whole lot of complexity to what's going on with this plumbing. Essentially, there's two two inch drains coming out of the 400 right now they are just going straight out to these two outer lines here, going down to the floor, snaking around the floor, all the way back to the 265, which is over 50 feet away. If the valves are reversed, it will cause the water to overflow into this water storage tank, which will then overflow into this water storage tank, which then overflows down these other drain lines here, back to the 265. Why did I do this? Well, 
This is my inline water change station. And the primary reason for having these tanks was to give myself extra water in the system to where if I wanted to do a water change, all I have to do is isolate these tanks, drain them out, refill them with RODI water. I'm also going to put an RODI line in here with a float valve on it so that the RO system can function on it just as it does on my other water storage tanks. I fill them up with RODI water. I have a recirculating pump I don't have installed yet that will flow water between the tanks. I'm going to install a separate radiant heating coil for just these tanks here. Then once I have it up to temperature, I can add my salt and the extra additives. Then when that's done, all I need to do is re-divert the water to start overflowing in here and overflowing out and the water change is done. Now I got this idea originally from a YouTuber called Blue Carbon Reefing. I recently kind of gave him a shout out on a live stream that he happened to be in chat on saying, hey, thanks for the idea. And he actually said, Mr. Saltwater Tank actually is where he got it from. So thank you to Mr. Saltwater Tank and Blue Carbon Reefing for giving me this inspiration of this idea. And I think this does a lot more than just give me a water change station. This is 500 gallons of extra tank volume. So it can help a little bit with some aspects of aquarium stability. It also gives me 500 gallons of emergency use water that's in the system already. So if something happens and let's say the 400 needs a major water change for some reason and I gotta suck out a bunch of water from that tank specifically, I can pump water from these tanks out. And lastly, this is also going to act as a refugium between water changes. Now due to the water volume of my aquarium system, I don't know how often I'm going to do water changes. It might be a few months between them or maybe just every month. But in that time, a lot of microfauna and macrofauna will be able to grow in here and help continually seed the tank in a predator-free environment. So a lot of great benefits to this. And just so everyone knows, these are two 250-gallon HDPE roto molded tanks. They are called doorway tanks because they're only 29 inches wide. They fit down my stairs without a problem. They're plumbed together with uniseals, which is the first time I've actually used uniseals myself. And I gotta say, they work pretty good. But with the plumbing in here, it did take a lot of time. There's a lot of things to line up. And just because of that, it took me a lot more time to get everything properly glued together. When I did test fill it, I didn't have any leaks on my glue joints, although I had one of my True Union ball valves that I had loosened up a little bit. So I got a little rain shower when I turned the valve over to let water come through it. In either case though, everything seems to be working out good here. I did raise the height of these two 250 gallon tanks, primarily because I wanted the drain at a high level because I need the gravity assist back at the 265 gallon. As the drains from this tank are the gravity feed for the protein skimmer back in the 265 gallon sump. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Apologies for the noise over here, but the water level is a little bit low in the sump right now because I'm gonna to have to lower it even further for a problem I uncovered in testing out the gravity feed to the skimmer. So the two two inch drain lines for the protein skimmer they come to these two two inch lines right here. I did the same exact setup that I had in my last aquarium system with some minor differences. One, I raised the height of these drain lines higher. And they're a little bit lower than the display tank and the water storage tanks. And the reason I did that is to try and maximize the water height in this protein skimmer. So it'll go higher than it ever would have normally gone in case I want to bring it up to that level. And I can control that water height a couple of ways. One, I could use a gate valve to control my flow into the skimmer. And two, the higher the standpipe I put on the outside of the skimmer, the higher the water should go. Hence where my problem with the skimmer has been uncovered. Now, this protein skimmer is a cone bottom inductor tank that I flipped upside down, cut the bottom off of, attach the custom ring and my skimmer cup to. There's two JBO DCP 15,000 pumps with custom needle wheels is recirculating in there. 
for just sucking in air through venturis and recirculating it in there through a bubble chamber. The two inch line feeding in from the side uh, is just going in with a push fitting onto a two inch bulkhead and the outflow is on a two inch bulkhead. Now everything else on there is just male female threaded fittings with some gaskets pushed into them and the lid for the tank is just screwed on without any kind of gasket seal. The skimmer has always been leaky. It sits in the sump for a reason. It's not a watertight skimmer. It does leak out of those fittings. And it never was a problem in the last build because it was being overwhelmed with the drain lines of a reflow hammer hut. However, the DCP 15,000 on its own isn't quite as much water volume. And what I found is the water level in the skimmer is not maintaining. I put a standpipe in it to see how high I can get it to go and miraculously the water disappears. Now when I first did that, I was like, all right, where's the water going? I checked the tank, it's not overflowing. I checked the floor, it's not overflowing on the floor. And I closed the gate valve off all the way so all the water's coming down this line and it's not filling up, which means I got leaks. Now initially I found a piece of plumbing disconnected, I got that fixed, and ultimately I pulled the whole skimmer out, which is a pretty big job. I tightened the lid down, checked all the fittings, it looked good, and I said, I'll put it back, it should be good to go. I did that, and I can only get the water height to about here, which normally would be acceptable, but I really want that full height, and in order to do that, I'm going to have to pull the whole thing out again. So then I'm going to do some modifications to the skimmer bill. Now for starters with the skimmer, the first thing I'm going to do is I do have some bulkheads in there and I did that long before I knew about uniseals a few years ago, which I just never really knew what they were or had experience with them. But I'm going to swap those out with uniseals along with all the other fittings in this skimmer so that everything's got uniseals so that plumbing shouldn't be able to leak anymore. And the next thing I have to do is take the skimmer's lid that's on the bottom, which is a 16 inch lid, and figure out a way to seal that. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do it yet. I might use some pond liner as a gasket. I might use some silicone to seal it. I might use a combination of the two. I haven't decided what I'm going to do exactly yet, but I know that it's going to take a little bit of effort. So the next thing I got to do is pull the skimmer out, which is the job I'll be taking on this evening after I finish this video. But that's the drain for the 400. Let's talk about the rest of the system real quick. One of the first things you'll probably notice if you've been watching my videos is it's actually kind of clean right here. There's a little PVC on here, but this is one of my work patches I'm going to keep for aquarium stuff. And I have cleaned out this room. The fish room has been emptied of all tools, saws, extra building materials, PVC plumbing that's not going to be used, which is all stuff for the skimmer project that I'm going to be working on in the next few days. So I've cleaned it all out. The room's been emptied out. I've got this whole section completely cleaned out, which was an enormous job. It took me all day, but I finally cleaned it out. The final thing I did to this room was clean it all out. I said I moved all the tools and stuff. I cleaned this whole area. I vacuumed the entire floor. Every surface I could find, I vacuumed up. I still have a few things to just wipe down with a, a rag to get some dust off of stuff. But really, I cleaned the room up as best I could. With that done, the room is really going to be ready for going into operations when I can move stuff in. The plan right now is I'm going to let everything continue to run. I'm going to fix the skimmer, get that working. Hopefully in another week, week and a half, I'll send out a water sample for ICP testing. As long as my water sample for ICP testing comes back with a clean bill of health, there's no metals or anything in there that's at a high level of toxicity, which I expect there's going to be a whole lot of nothing, then I'm good to go. I'm going to go ahead, mix the salt into the system. Once the salt's mixed in, I'll let it sit for a few days, and then I'm going to transfer everything out of the temporary system and into the new system. All the corals are going to go into the 400, and three of the four fish that I have are going to go in the 400. The Spanish hog is going to go in the 150. Once I have that done, the temp tank's getting torn down, I'm going to build the secondary sump, and then I have some other touch-up things to do in this room with 
some storage shelves for bins. I got a ton of boxes of stuff that I need to clean, organize, and prepare uh, just to get stuff the way that it should be in this room. A lot of stuff got shoved in boxes when I moved. I just got to get all of that stuff organized in a much better way. That's the update video for today. Hope you enjoyed it. You got comments or questions, want to leave a like, do that down below. As always, thanks again for watching everybody, and I'll see you on the next video.